What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here in today's mission, IGN ranked Square Enix the worst show of E3. In all honesty, I don't even think IGN is trying to be credible anymore or just hates Square Enix. But then again, IGN is also the same company that gave Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire a lower rating because, and I quote, too much water. Oh, and I almost forgot, they've also been caught plagiarizing small YouTube channels and their reviews and have been caught faking reviews for games they haven't even played. So what the f*** do you expect from them? Final Fantasy VII Remake alone won several Best of Show awards, illustrated by Yoshinori Katase standing next to all of them here. But then again, who am I to judge? IGN ranked the conferences in this order. Nintendo, Microsoft, Ubisoft, Bethesda, and EA, and then in their words, bringing up the rear, Square Enix. After reading their article about the rankings they gave each conference, it's easy to see they clearly just don't give a shit anymore. Now don't get me wrong here, Nintendo deserved to be in the 1 or 2 spot for sure, but the real reason IGN ranked Square Enix so low? Not a lot of gameplay was shown for Marvel's Avengers. It was the game's world premiere, and up until this point, people barely knew the game existed in the first place. They also basically cast aside everything else that Square Enix showed, lumping in a few of the announcements in the who gives a sh file. So let's take a look at some of the things we saw and try to figure out what was going through IGN's head when they printed this bullshit. Final Fantasy VII Remake showed more than enough gameplay and trailers for the entire show and almost carried E3 by itself. All the major developers of the game showed an impressive amount of footage for a game still 9 months from release. Then you have all the different announcements that were made. We saw a new trailer for Life is Strange 2 featuring reaction clips from fans and reviewers. Then you've got the fact that we got a surprise announcement about a Final Fantasy VIII remaster that blew everyone's minds. That game looks fantastic and short of a few E3 leakers, no one saw it coming. Dragon Quest XI is getting a definitive edition on Nintendo Switch with story expansion, new soundtrack options, and a 16-bit mode that spans the entire game. Marvel's Avengers got shown, and while fans are complaining about the character models, this is still an early version of the game, well before the polishing process has begun. We didn't get much gameplay, but we're getting a beta, so it's not a huge deal. At least Marvel fans are getting a beta, us FF7 Remake fans are still in the dark. We all know that by the time Marvel Avengers comes out, we'll be getting more demonstrations, more gameplay, and more trailers the closer it gets to launch, much like they're doing with the Final Fantasy VII Remake. We also got a look at the much-anticipated Dragon Dragon Quest Builders 2 and some of its new features. Overall, Square Enix had a really strong showing, and I would have ranked it number 2 for overall performance. Nintendo did a really good job with their E3 Direct, so definitely no shade will be thrown at them this time. So I could sit here all day and bitch about IGN and not tell you what other companies brought to the table, but since I like to show all sides, that's what I'm gonna do. We'll go in reverse order and talk about the evil microtransaction fest that is EA. They started by showing 15 minutes of gameplay for their new Star Wars Jedi game, Fallen Order. As a longtime Star Wars fan, I'm actually really excited for this game. However, after that, it was basically a snooze fest, discussing Madden 20 and FIFA 20, which is an avid sports game player I'm fine with. However, we all know these games are top-heavy with microtransactions. We got another dose of Apex Legends Season 2, with Battle Royale games still being popular, and a new Sims 4 expansion and Battlefield 5 maps were shown, but overall, a very typical lackluster performance. Then we've got Bethesda and Bless them, they tried. We got updates on a game no one cared about in Fallout 76. This was then followed by a circle jerk known as Free to Play Week, which offered a free to play version of Fallout 76. After making terrible jokes about the game's failures, Todd Howard brought in developers that showed off, you guessed it, another f battle royale game. They consistently kept apologizing for their sh show of a game and claimed they had so much fun playing the new mode. This was an attempt to drum up excitement for those that hadn't made a terrible purchase yet and still wanted to do so. You know your game is bad when you're on the biggest stage in gaming and your most exciting announcement is adding human NPCs to your game. Thanks Bethesda, you just won best of show for that sh I will say this however, Bethesda's conference was definitely backloaded, but that was to avoid everyone turning off their TVs after all the good announcements were already made. Doom Eternal looked fantastic, and while I'm not a huge fan of FPS games, I do play and enjoy them, and I enjoyed the first Doom reboot. Ghostwire Tokyo stole the show for Bethesda for me, and Akuma Nakamura made the entire conference worth watching. After watching that trailer, I'm definitely excited to see what this new game from the minds of the evil within turns out to be. Overall though, another lackluster performance is it was basically an ass-kissing festival, complete with three apology videos disguised as an E3 conference. Ubisoft got a big reward from IGN for showing a dog on stage because Bam Bam was a good boy. He was on stage for the showing of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. They also gave us a look at yet another alien shooter in Rainbow Six Quarantine, which was interesting, but it's just an alien version of Siege. We also saw another Watch Dogs because the other two were so great. Ubisoft did, however, show something pretty impressive, tossing their hat into the subscription-based gaming ring. Titled Uplay Plus, you can pay $15 a month to get unlimited access to hundreds of titles in their DLCs. 
You'll also get classic games like Ubisoft's Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed. It's set for launch in September of 2019. Overall, Ubisoft wasn't too horrible, but it wasn't mind-blowing either. But kudos for winning the Bestest Boy Award at E3. Take that, Keanu Reeves. Speaking of Keanu Reeves, if there was anything that was going to win Xbox E3, it would be John Wick. Well, he came, he saw, he definitely conquered. However, Xbox did not follow suit, showing almost nothing exclusive that was worth worrying about other than a new Halo game for their new console and Gears 5, Cyberpunk 2077 stole the show. Winning a lot of E3 awards, Cyberpunk had an incredible showing, especially after Keanu Reeves took the stage and revealed that they had put him in the game. However, with this title not being an exclusive, the excitement was mostly for the game and not its presence on Xbox. We got to see a preview of the newest Halo, which admittedly looked gorgeous, but again, IGN's biggest complaint about Avengers was lack of gameplay, but they didn't mind that when it came to Halo Infinite or Gears 5 for some reason. We did get to see some pretty cool non-exclusives, but taking place on a conference dedicated solely to their console didn't help Xbox any, just the developers of those games. We saw Tales of Arise, an unexpected entry into the Tales series that looked amazing. We also got a look at Borderlands 3, Dying Light 2, a newly acquired Square Enix title I might add, and The Elden Ring, a title from the mind of Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin. Double Fine Studios also took the opportunity to showcase Psychonauts 2, a sequel to the highly popular masterpiece Psychonauts. This was part of Xbox showing off some of the studios that they've recently acquired. Overall, Microsoft's show wasn't horrible, but it didn't have the effect I was hoping for. They did show off that PC would be receiving games. Game Pass, which is definitely interesting, but not sure if I'll take advantage of it or not. To Xbox's credit, they did show an incredible amount of games. Mostly they relied on titles that were non-exclusives and didn't even show us what the Project Scarlet looks like though. At every one of their conferences, I want them to give me a reason to buy an Xbox, and this year they showed more games that I can just pick up on my PC or PS4. I should actually thank Microsoft for that though, because they are saving me 300 or more dollars. Now let's take a look at Nintendo's E3 Direct. Nintendo made the right move, showing a preview of Breath of the Wild 2 and Fire Emblem Three Houses. We also got to see Luigi's Mansion 3, Astral Chain, Pokemon Sword and Shield, and Super Mario Maker 2 gameplay. There were a lot of announcements from start to finish, and Nintendo really blew the doors off of everyone this year. From gameplay trailers to new Smash Bros. DLC, Nintendo definitely brought their A-plus game. And this year's E3 showing was definitely a step in the right direction. With this showing, I would have to agree that Nintendo won this year's E3. However, I'd still place Square Enix at number 2. Their titles were more exciting, and some were even featured among the other conferences. I guess for IGN to recognize Square Enix, they'd need to A, love JRPGs, and B, pull their heads out of their asses. I also guess for Square Enix to impress IGN, they'd need to bring out both a dog and Keanu f***ing Reeves next time. That would have definitely won the E3. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to omni slash that like button. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of IGN's rankings. Subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell to join the ranks of Soldier today. And for all the latest Square Enix news, I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later, guys.